structural floor is a system of framing members that are inserted at the same time. Select Insert, Structural Floor, Structural Floor by Perimeter. Although the structural floor is considered a single object, each member in the floor can be stretched or shortened individually. You can also add or remove members for greater framing flexibility and accuracy. Select a floor system in the catalog panel to the right and then right click and select Edit Element. At the top of the dialog is an option to regenerate components when updated. When checked, this erases and rebuilds the auto-generated framing components if the floor edge is modified, for example, stretched. When unchecked, the members remain intact when the floor edge is modified. Note that enabling this setting does not rebuild members that have been manually added to the floor system. Structural floor properties include settings for the joist, sheathing, sill plate, and rim joist, and those components are listed on the left. Their associated properties are listed in the middle and a diagram is on the right. Click General Properties. Joist direction is the angle which the joists run. In Envisioneer, the right of the drawing screen is 0 degrees, the top is 90 degrees, the left is 180 degrees, and the bottom of the screen is 270 degrees. Joist spacing, the spacing between joist center line to center line. Style, the behavior of joists that rest on the bearing line. The stagger option overlaps the joist ends. The whole back option pushes the joist ends away from the bearing line. Distance, the overlap distance when joist ends are staggered or the distance between joist ends when they're held back along the bearing line. Select sheathing. Sheathing can be included, yes, to include it or no if you don't want to include the sheathing. Click on the field and then click the browse button to select a sheathing material from the catalog. The phase, click on the phase and then click the browse button to assign a phase to the sheathing. The phase can be used as a sort key in quantity reports. Usage can also be used as a sort key in the quantity reports. Joists, sill plates, band joists, rim joists, and opening headers all have these same framing options. The framing components are arranged into individual folders. If you click New, you can add a member to a selected folder or click Copy to copy an existing member. Click Delete to remove a selected member from the configuration. Parameters include the name, a unique identifier for the member, the member which you're using from the member catalog, and rotation, the orientation of the member's profile. It also includes phase and usage for ordering purposes. There's also alignment, the point of the member that you want to use as a reference point when editing it. Choices are top, center, and bottom. You can also deal with openings. There's an edge offset. The offset of the opening's edge members from the line that you draw when cutting an opening. You can enter a positive or a negative value to offset the members to either side of the line. There's also joist projection, the distance that the joist projects into the opening edge. Click OK to exit the dialog box. Move the cursor on the drawing screen area and click anywhere inside the model. The floor is automatically inserted. To view the framing members, select View, View Filter, View Filter, or select the View Filter icon. In the View Filter dialog box, under the Elements on Location tab, select the plus sign beside Floors in the Element Name list. This will expand the floor elements. Open the eye to turn on the visibility beside Structural Floor Framing. For visual ease in the example model, Appliances, Cabinets, Interior Lighting, and Plumbing Fixtures eyes will be closed. Then click OK. The individual joists are now visible. Left click to select the edge of the inserted structural floor. Since the floor is sitting lower than the surrounding walls, you may need to cycle select or hide the wall edges to be able to do this. You can tell that a structural floor is selected if red arrows are displayed at the floor's grip points. Along each edge of the structural floor system, there will be red arrows that point to the plate along the edge of the floor and a solid blue grip. Each corner will have a hollow blue grip. The structural floor can be moved and reshaped by moving the grips. For example, by holding down the left mouse button over a solid blue grip, it can be picked up and the edge moved to a new position. In our example model, since structural floor by perimeter was used, it went into the garage as well. But by moving the grip back, it removes floor framing from that area. You can insert a bearing line in a structural floor to indicate where there will be a beam or a support point. With the structural floor system still selected, right click and select structural floor, insert a bearing line. Select two points to draw a line through the floor joist. The joists are automatically cut along the bearing point. 
The joist ends on the bearing line will either be overlapped or held back depending on what was specified in the floor's properties. By default, framing in a structural floor is marked with a blue triangle. You may want to shift the base point to start the joist from a different point. This may, for example, facilitate the application of sheathing. To move the framing base point, click on the edge of the structural floor to select it. Right click and select Structural Floor, Move Framing Base Point. The current framing base point is marked with a light blue triangle. Either drag the light blue triangle to a new location or click on any point in your drawing and enter a precise move distance in the commander and press enter. The base point is moved and the framing adjusts accordingly. You can customize the framing of a structural floor by adding members to it. These manually inserted members become associated with the floor and behave as though they are part of it. Insert members using the member tool or advanced member tool. For this example, three 3.5 three by 11 and 7 eighths beams were inserted using the advanced member tool. Select the inserted members, then right click and select Add to Structural Floor System. A dialog box confirms the number of members added. If you need to disassociate a member from the flooring, use Remove from Structural Floor System. If you need to delete a member from the structural floor, simply select it and press delete on your keyboard. The structural floor tool is a quick and easy way to define all of the framing elements required for a floor system. The ability to be able to edit and add and remove members from it makes it very versatile. I hope this makes your work easier.